to Greater Mayo Apostolic Church, our live streaming service for Resurrection Sunday. Let us give the Lord a praise. Amen. We thank the Lord for this opportunity to be before you this morning. Amen. We hope that you will continue to uh, do watch parties on Facebook, stream it live so that others may take part. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us go before the Lord in prayer for today. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you today. We appreciate you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness and your mercy toward us, Lord. Lord, even through this pandemic, this difficult time, Lord, you have shown yourself merciful and kind to the people of God, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your covering, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for being our provider, our healer, Lord Jesus, our counselor, Lord. We thank you for being our encourager, our buckler, our shield today, Lord Jesus. We thank you for being God on the throne, Lord. There's none like you, Lord, in all the world, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask you, Lord Jesus, today to bless the service, Lord. Bless all around the globe, Lord Jesus. We ask you to bless, Lord, our natural leaders. Lord, we ask you to bless, Lord Jesus, all those in the medical community, the front yes. line of defense right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Those that are dealing with this coronavirus, Lord, yes, right Lord. now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless every pastoral leader right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as they navigate through these difficult yes, times, Lord, to be a blessing to the flock of God, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask you right now to help our hearts be lifted up, Lord, to have, help us have joy, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We love you today. We honor you on this Resurrection Sunday, Lord. Lord, we commemorate you, Lord Jesus. Lord, it's not enough that you died, but you rose, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we give you all the glory for the redemption plan of man, Lord Jesus, that we may reign eternally with you. We give you all the glory, honor, and the praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you. 
together. Open your mouth and give the Lord all the glory right now today. For he is worthy of the praise. Amen. Uh, we do have several announcements. We would ask you if you are so inclined uh, to please grab a pen and paper. There are some things that we definitely do not want you to miss as we go through this. Amen. Um, the first and probably most important for those that are residents of the city of Chattanooga, uh, the executive order, amen, by Mayor Andy Burke, uh, which uh, lent itself to the shelter in place, has been extended for another seven days. We do ask you to please go to Chattanooga.gov online, or you can even go to our Facebook page, and we will continue to post information related to the shelter in place. Uh, that being said, we are just reminding you, please do not physically come to the church for service unless you are specifically notified. But outside of that, we always invite you to please uh, see us on Facebook Live. Amen. We do have prayer sessions, which we will announce here. Uh, Bible study is Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Uh, via Facebook Live and teleconference call. Uh, Monday night prayer. Uh, we have my teleconference call at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as well as our Tuesday and Friday noonday prayers, which start at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, if you are not receiving any updates via Realm, we do invite you to contact our very own Sister Rochelle Blackman at office at greateremanualchurch.org and provide her with your name and email address. If you have never been to Greater Emanuel Apostolic Church and desire to be a part of this information, by all means, this does not exclude you. We invite you to still email and give us your information so we can keep you tied in. For the conference call numbers, there are two numbers you may call. The first one is area code 717-275-8940. The other is area code 712-832-8330. For both of these, you may use PIN 992-2952. And again, this is for our Monday night prayer at 7, our Tuesday and Friday noonday prayer sessions. You can also download the free conference app from your Android or Apple device. Once downloaded, and you can open the app and also, again, enter code 992-2952. Please invite your friends and families to follow us on TEAC and Chattanooga Facebook page. If they like the page and also sign up for the notification, they will be advised on when the live services are taking place. Also on YouTube, we do post all of our videos. If you want to see the Sunday services, just search for GEAC Sunday Service, or for Bible Study, search for GEAC Bible Study. And uh, that is all of our announcements today. We do bless you in the name of Jesus. Now at this time, we ask you to please receive the Senior Pastor of Greater Main Lapisola Church, that in the person of Pastor Paul Warfield. <laughs> Come on, do you love the Lord in the house today? Come on, let's glorify him. What a wonderful God. What a holy God, what a mighty God we serve. We're so happy to be in the house of the Lord. And once again, we're so happy for all of you that are tuning in with us on our live stream service at Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Church, where we are located at 400 Tunnel Boulevard, Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, 374. Of one one, and so we're so thankful that this is what we celebrate and know as Resurrection Sunday when our Lord and Savior Amen. Uh, rose from the grave. The Bible Amen. says in Matthew 28 and 18 that He rose with all power in His hands, and we thank God for that. Well, so good to see, so to speak, anyway, all of you. And I want, uh, before we bring the word, I want Sister Lisa to come and just help us with something that's near and dear to my heart. Come on, give the Lord a praise and she come forth. Let me just bless the Lord in this place. Wherever you are, yes. oh, hallelujah.
uh, as we move forward, the Bible uh, uh, goes on to say that, or rather, we believe in baptism, so immersion, that's that death, that's that burial. You don't see in graveyards, you don't see people, what do they say? If you get upset with someone, maybe you've said this before, maybe you haven't, maybe someone has said it to you, they say, man, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to put you six feet under. You don't say you're going to put them two inches under or a foot under. When somebody dies, they are buried. Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. So that's why we believe in baptism and full water immersion because Amen. it represents that burial. Yes. When we're buried, that means everything is put in the ground. Yes. Amen. Glory to the name of God. Uh, the Bible says that, that God has graven us in the palm of his hand. It, it, he's not, we're not on the palm of his hand. We're in the palm yes. of his hand. Okay, we're in his hand. That means he's graving us. He essentially does a whole figuratively speaking in his hand. That means when we die we're in him, we're protected by him. That means he said, Jesus said, nobody can pluck you out of my father's hand. That's why we have confidence today in our Lord Jesus Christ when we have repented of our sins, when we've been baptized in his name, and when we receive the Holy Ghost representing that resurrected life. The Bible says in Acts 2 and 41, Then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. We, what do you mean? When we receive this word, we'll bury ourselves in Jesus Christ. When we receive this word, we will say, uh, not just in the cliche, but we will say, uh, not thy will, O God, uh, or rather not my will, Lord God, but thy will be done. So, Acts 8 and 37 said this, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. When we believe, we must be baptized, which represents that death, yes. amen, or that burial rather. Acts 16 and 15 said, And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, yes. come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. She says, If you've judged me to be faithful, why would I judge you to be faithful? Because you've taken on his name and you've been baptized. You've been buried with him, representing that death, burial, and then the Holy Ghost with the resurrection. Romans 6 and 3 says this, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death and like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. When we're buried with him in baptism, we have the hope that we will rise again. You cannot rise uh, 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 in the sense of rising in Christ if you don't die in Christ. Are y'all talking back to me in the house today? Amen. So as many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ, that's why the name is important. We must be baptized into his name. We must be buried, representing that death uh, and that burial uh, by baptism uh, into his death. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse 12, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of the one body, of that one body being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's why the spirit of God is important. The Bible says that if you have, if you have not his spirit, then we are none of his. Yes. That's why we don't want the Holy Spirit of God just to, just to be excited and just to shout and just to speak in a heavenly language. We need his spirit, number one, to save us. Then the Bible says that the spirit of God will lead us and guide us into all truth. The Bible says that in the last day, there'll be the, the, the spirit of Antichrist will come. And even now, already is that spirit of Antichrist in the world. It tells us to beware of false prophets. How are we going to know when we we have the Spirit of God to lead us and to guide us into all truth and to encourage us and to 
helper. The Bible says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That New Testament word comforter is synonymous to the Old Testament word that can be found in Isaiah. I believe it's 9 and 6 and on down where it says uh, that unto us a son is uh, uh, born, a son and a child is born, a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. That same, that Old Testament counselor is the same word in the New Testament as comforter. So he is our comforter, but he is also our counselor. He is the one that when we are in trouble, when we are in need, he is the one that is there for us. Amen. Are you talking back to me? Amen. Amen. Amen in the house today. As we go on, the Bible says that uh, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We are baptized into one body. Amen. This is not my body, your body, this person's body. This is the body of Christ. Amen. And so we must understand there is one Lord, there is one faith, and there is one baptism. There is only one way to God. The Bible says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. We have to come unto him. Amen. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want I want to say to some people today that have been tossing and turning and, and in and out and worried about this and worried about that. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. I want you to know you don't have to take that burden upon yourself. Amen. Let him take that burden. He said, take my burden upon you. Take my yoke, for my burden is light, and my yoke is easy. You don't have to keep on struggling with the things we've been struggling. Just like they sang in the song, that that blood of Jesus Christ, it soothes all of my doubts, and it calms all of my fear to know that one day we're going to get to be with the Lord. And if you believe that, and you want that, you ought to give God some praise Hallelujah. in this house today. Jesus. Now the Bible goes on to say, now, here's what's beautiful about it. There's one body. He said that if we're Jews, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have we have been all made to drink into one spirit. The Bible goes on to say in Galatians 3 and 27, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. He said, as I am in this world, so are you. So when we put on Christ, then we're putting on the nature of Christ. What is the nature of Christ? First of all, the Bible says that God is love. So we cannot say that we belong to Christ when we do not have love, when we take on the nature of Christ. There's an old adage or an old saying that people would say, WWJD, what would Jesus do? When we take on and put on Christ, we that means we put on the characteristics of Christ, the attributes of Christ, the traits of Christ, the personality of Christ. That's why I say it over and over again, that people need to stop saying, well, I know I've been baptized and I know I've been saved and I repented of my sin, but you know, I'm just me and I'm just going to keep on being me. I rebuke that lie back to the pits of hell where it belongs. You either take it on his name and you strive in him or you do not. When you're buried with him, that means you get rid of it. You might go, listen, that means that body is dead. Somebody may say, uh, you know, up at the funeral, oh, well, look at Aunt Mabel. I don't mean any disrespect, but that is no longer Aunt Mabel. That is the body that Aunt Mabel used to live in. But we're getting ready to go bury Aunt Mabel. And though whatever you want, you still have the memories of her, but Aunt Mabel is gone. So that old life needs to die. But it can't just die. It's got to be buried. That's why there's certain health codes that are in, in, in. You don't go down to the local cemetery and just see bodies laying on top of the ground. It's not just enough to die. Because if I don't bury it, it's going to stink and cause a ruckus. There are some of us that we say we have died, we have repented, but we have not buried that attitude. We've not buried our own lust Oh, uh, thinking and those types of things. Uh, we got to bury them. How do we bury them? Uh, we bury them under the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody give God some praise. The house today. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, put on Christ. It says again, Colossians 2 and 12, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Amen. Glory to God. 
Then the Bible goes on to say in 1 Peter 3 and 21, the like figure we're into, even baptism doth also now save us because we're burying our old self. We cannot be saved in the flesh that we're in now. We cannot be saved after the old man. Uh, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection. We'll talk about the resurrection in a moment of Jesus Christ. Remember last week I started, we're still dealing with part two of the big six, okay? The, the six uh, principal foundations of the doctrine of Christ, okay? Which were, amen, repentance from dead works, faith toward God, um, uh, baptism, uh, laying on of hands, which we're going to talk about briefly for a moment, and then we'll end today with the resurrection of the dead, pick up next week with eternal judgment and a few other things. But so it's very, it's very uh, uh, timely, I would say, that we're dealing with baptism, amen, this as we celebrate as Resurrection Sunday. Now, as we move forward, the Bible says in Acts 19 and 2, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto then what were ye baptized? All right. See, Holy Ghost represents that resurrection. Why? Because it's a new life. Understand that when they noticed that they had not received the Holy Ghost or had not been resurrected, the question was asked, wait a minute, this is how important baptism is. If you haven't received the Holy Ghost, why? Well, how were you baptized? In other words, there might have been something that was going on that was incorrect about your baptism that maybe was a hindrance in your resurrection. Are you talking back to me today? And they said, unto John's baptism, the doctrine of baptisms, right? Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. That's right. That means that when John baptized people, what he did and what he said was, I now baptize you unto repentance. He literally most likely said, when he put them down in water, he said, I baptize you unto repentance. That's why when Christ went to be baptized, he said of, of Christ, you know, he, he, why, why you don't have need? I'm paraphrasing. Why do you need, Lord, to be baptized? Right. Because you cannot repent. Because you have no sin. Right. But he did it as an example so that, right. so that the scriptures could be fulfilled. That's that right. he was tempted at all point, like as we are, yet without sin. And so he went through everything he was supposed to go through. He went through the due order. Right. Are you talking back to me? That's right. And yeah. So it was very important. Their resurrection was connected to their baptism. Somebody might feel like, I'm not coming back alive again. I've not been revived. I've not been renewed. I've not been resuscitated, then you must revisit the death. You must revisit the baptism. Yeah, it, 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 they were baptized under repentance, but they had not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They had not buried the old life. We must bury the old life, the old sin, the old attitude, the old everything. And I thank God there's a hope of a resurrected life. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now, now, so it says that uh, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him. That was the baptism of repentance. That is on Christ Jesus. Now, when they heard this, when they corrected them, they said they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And before we get into the resurrection of the dead, this, this other uh, principle of Christ, and I think this is important, especially I think it's uh, 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 quite funny that we're dealing with social distancing and then we talk about the laying on of hands. <laughs> but now, amen, glory to God, but it's a principle of the doctrine of Christ. And the reason we must discuss these things is because if we move further, we'll get into probably next week, is we, when we get these down and we understand the principle of the doctrine of Christ, then we can go on unto perfection. Right. We shouldn't be arguing about baptism. We shouldn't that's be right. arguing about resurrection and the laying on of the hands. That's and that's right. why we want to show you here in the Bible what these things say. And it's biblical here. The Bible says, uh, okay, as, a, as, a pro, as, as in regards to the laying on of hands, it was used in several different ways, both Old Testament and New Testament. We'll be dealing mostly with the Old Testament because this is, I'm sorry, with the New Testament as this is the, the, the principle of the doctrine of Christ, though we may throw in no testament scripture here or there uh, for learning's sake, for the Bible says that the scriptures were written aforetime time for our learning, that we through comfort and patience of the scriptures might have hope. Now, 
Genesis 48 and 14, and first of all, laying on of hands was used in the act of blessing. In the act of blessing. Genesis 48, 14 says, In Israel, we know him as Jacob, we knew him as Jacob, stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. You jump to verse 20. And 20 says, And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he said Ephraim before Manasseh. It was used in the act of blessing. Mark 10 and 14. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, speaking of the children, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, who of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, right. put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Bless. It was used, the laying on of hands was used, and was used biblically in the healing of the sick. I just have a few, few scriptures for each yes. part. There are a lot more than that. But Mark 6 and 5. And he could there do no mighty work, speaking of Jesus, save that he laid his hand All right. upon a few sick folk mm. and healed them. James 5 and 14 says, Is any sick among you? Mm. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. Healing right. of the sick. Right. And Acts 28 and 8 says this, and it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flukes, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid hands on him mm -hmm. and healed him. Mm -hmm. All right. There's something about the transferring of that power. That's right. Are you talking back to me today? That's why Christ said in Matthew 28 and 18, he rose with all authority, with all power in his hand. There's something about the transference of when we've got the Holy Ghost, when someone that has the Spirit of God and living God, that transfers that power by the laying on of hands. Are y'all talking to me? Amen. Now, the Bible goes on to say in Matthew 16 and 18, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That's the, 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 and, and, and verse 16 talks about these signs shall follow them that believe. Right. Okay? One of the things that shall follow those that believe is they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Let me be clear that this is not talking about somebody saying, well, that's Old Testament stuff. No. That is for today that you, that, that you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But here's one thing we have to understand that I can lay hand on myself and I can recover. Come on, somebody. somebody say, I can't get to the church. You are the church. You are the body of Christ. You lay your hands on yourself and you shall recover. Do you believe that in the house today? Amen. The laying on of hands. This is important as we lead up in the resurrection. If we talk about Holy Ghost represents that. The other thing that the laying on of hands was used was in the receiving of what? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Acts 8 and 17 says, Then laid they their hands on them, mm -hmm. and they received the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Transference of power. Thank you, Jesus. Transference of resurrection. It don't need to be if I'm dead. That's why it's important, Mr. Keith, for me to die and be buried so I can rise again. If I'm dead and I don't have life in me, I cannot lay my hand on somebody else and bring life back into them. Can you talk back to me? The Bible says, except the corner of the wheat uh, uh, die and fall to the ground. First, I got to die and fall to the ground. But then, when I would listen, when you when you put an apple seed, this is why I know I'm back to death in a second, but when you put an apple seed in the ground, it don't just bear up another apple seed. It don't even bring up just another apple. But so why do you say, why is it so important for us to die? Because if I die and fall to the ground and if I'm buried and I'm the one going to be in your seed, it brings up a big old tree that don't just have one branch, two branches. It might have a hundred or so branches and hundreds or of apples that come up. So if I can die to me, I can bear fruit and dozens of people can be resurrected. Resurrected so that at that last 
day they will be raised up. Somebody give God some praise in the house today. So now, the receiving of the Holy Ghost, they lay hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. I just had a few scriptures in there, but understand there were many times when they needed the Holy Ghost that hands were laid on them and they received the Holy Ghost. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. It was also used, uh, uh, the laying on of hands was also used in the setting apart of someone for a particular office. Yes, Acts 6 and 3, speaking of the first seven deacons of the church, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Amen. Glory to God. And, and, and if you jump down to verse 6, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased. Uh -huh. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Laying on of hands, Acts 13 and 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. It was man that laid their hands on them, but it was the Holy Ghost that sent them forth. Are you, Are you talking to me in the house today? It was the power. God uses a man, but it's the Spirit of God that does the work in the Spirit. Are you talking to me today? Now, we get into this, and this is where I wanted to end today about the resurrection of the dead. Because... And, and this can this can mean, let me just talk to you for a minute. This can mean uh, a few things when we look at it figuratively. We know, first of all, before we get into figurative, we know that we will rise again. The Bible says this in Hebrews 9 and 27, that it is appointed unto man, and we use this next week also, but it is appointed unto man once to die. Get in your mind and in your head right now, no matter how young you are, that it is appointed unto every one of us Amen. to die. Amen. And I know that, that we take things uh, for granted, you know, at times, and we think even when we're young, we can't. Uh, there was a young man, many of you uh, know him. Uh, I won't get into all that, but many of you know him uh, that were around, that was here. Uh, 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 his brother played uh, professional, us played professional football. We used to work out, see him, man. Uh, at the gym, and, and when we were going to the gym, amen, before all of this, amen, <laughs> glory to God, we would see him at the gym, and uh, man, just what, you know, we, he was a big, uh, you know, big, big fan of Ohio State, and we talked, whatever, well, I, I don't know, maybe it's been a month, but this young man, 28 years old, uh, was in a car accident. Uh, you would think that he just had full idea and ambition, I was just talking to him about he was applying for different places as far as to coach and different things of that nature, Gone like that. Jesus. It's appointed to every one of us to die. And the older that I become, you know, I remember, uh, you know, I was thinking, I was looking at Facebook, and I was thinking of uh, of little uh, of Amelia, and I was thinking how she's so blessed that she has both of her great, she has two great grandmothers that are alive, and that's just awesome. And I was thinking about my great grandmother was alive, and I, I mean, I was in my twenties when my great grandmother passed away. You know, and so when I thought about that, and what it made me think about was death. What do you mean by that? The older you get, the more you realize, I, 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 I'm more vulnerable than what I thought I was because you begin to see stuff. People, when you're in my age that are in your mid-40s, your parents may be starting to have some health issues. You know, maybe, maybe not. You've seen probably, most likely, your grandparents on both sides. I had my two grandmothers that passed within, I think, a month or so of one another. Um, but you see that it becomes to become a reality. I'm not trying to scare anyone. But what I am trying to do is let you know that death is inevitable. And you have to ask yourself a question. What happens after I die? Right. Come on, somebody. Right. That's the reality of the situation. If it has not already grasped you, by the end of this COVID-19 situation, when, if, whatever, whenever it ends, it should grasp you that death is a reality. And I need to do something not to be afraid of death, right, right. but to prepare myself for death. Yeah. 
to get my household in order, to get my life in order, and most importantly, to get my soul in order. Amen. I would never try to scare anybody into being, because let me tell you something, you're not going to be scared into living for God anyhow. I live for God because I love God. Come on, somebody. Yes. Because he first loved me. Because he had so much mercy on me that I didn't deserve. So it's a point other man wants to die. But after this, the judgment. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 35, women receive their dead. This is speaking of faith. We talked about faith being one of the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Faith toward God, which is extremely important. But women, but because of faith, because of faith, listen to this, because of faith, women received their dead raised to life again. And there were others that were tortured. They accepted not delivering that they might obtain a better resurrection. There's a better resurrection. Amen. So I want you to know that there is resurrection. He not only will we will, will he rise us, I believe that I'm going to rise again. Everybody's going to rise again. I got some scriptures at the last dance. Mm -hmm. Everybody is going to rise again. But some of the folks that rise again, they ain't going to want to rise again. And I'll talk about that here in a moment. Matter of fact, I'm going to talk about it right now because that's my next scripture. Amen. Oh, Amen. Daniel chapter 12 says this, verse 2, 1 and 2. Speaking of end time. At that time shall Michael stand up, Michael the angel, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Uh -huh. And there shall be a time of trouble. Wow. Hear me. Wow. Such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time thy people mm -hmm. shall be delivered. Mm -hmm. I don't care nothing about the trouble that's coming upon COVID-19, COVID-20, COVID-19. 50. It don't make a difference. Uh, amen. The Bible says there'll be a time of trouble that, but that thy people shall be delivered. Let me liken that unto you what that is like. In the, in the old books of the Bible where you had, amen, there were plagues that came upon Egypt land in the same area. It's not like Goshen was a hundred miles away. Goshen is simply, it was essentially, it's like was East Brainer and Brainer. Are you talking to me? Yeah. It wasn't like it was that far away. But yet you had plagues that were falling on the children of Egypt or the Egyptians, but they were not falling on the children of Israel. I don't care what kind of trouble is brought on the world. You need to understand that by the power, the resurrection power of the blood of Jesus Christ, when we are buried in him, we are protected by the blood of the Lamb. And I thank God for that. Somebody ought to give him praise unto him. Amen. He says, there was never been time. He said, but your people will be delivered. He says, who's going to be delivered? Everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life. And some to shame. And everlasting content. Everybody is going to rise again from the dead. But it's going to be two things that's going to happen. Some are going to wake up to everlasting life. They're going to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Wow. Some are going to wake up to everlasting shame and contempt. John 5 and 28 Jesus, said this, us, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. I believe he's going to call them by name. Mm. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil mm -hmm. unto the resurrection of damnation. But there's good news. Somebody put a smile on your face. Glory to God. John 11. See, he always, he always gives us hope. See, see, he even said in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, listen, 
He said, I have thought of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. What you're expected in? He said, listen, I would not that any should perish, yeah. but that all should come under repentance. Understand that Christ doesn't want anybody to perish. Yeah. He wants all to come unto repentance. He wants all to come unto everlasting life. Yeah. Glory. But now Martha said unto him, this is when, uh, John 11 and 24, when her brother uh, Lazarus had died and he said she said I know that my brother shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day I thank God for the last day and I thank God for the court that we will rise again at the last day but you know what my spirit or my soul might be dead right now so not only will he resurrect me at the last day he can bring life to my soul right now the Bible says in Psalm 42, I believe it's verse 11 as well as verse 5, the Bible says, uh, why art thou disquieted this this within me? It, it, it talks about the soul. Why art thou cast down, O oh, my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. My soul would have hope in the midst of this situation, in the midst of COVID-19. Amen. When H1N1 was going on, when all these other plagues have happened, when tornadoes happened, when we were displaced out of our home in Nashville from a flood where some people died, there was hope that God would bring us back, that God would restore, that God would give back that which had been taken away. He resurrects us not only in the life to come, but in this life. If you believe that, you ought to, somebody ought to shout Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Yeah. So, what Martin said to him, I got to move here. He, he, said, he said, listen, I believe that he's going to rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But I love the answer that Jesus Christ gave. He said, listen, let me tell you a little secret, Mark. You talk about him rising at the resurrection. He don't have to wait till the resurrection. Because the resurrection is right here. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection. I am. Hey, glory. The life of. And all he's got to do, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, he will never die. That means dead. I'm not afraid of you because I know when I die in Christ, I'm living. Come on, somebody, give him some praise up in here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She said, Believe us down there, sir. The Bible says in Romans 6 and 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of resurrection. Well, what is the likeness of resurrection? Amen. The Bible says that when he rose up, he didn't rise up with just a, amen, a little small amount of power. The Bible says when he rose up, that he didn't rise up with some power. When he rose, he didn't rise up with a lot of power. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he rose with all power in his hand. And that's how I know. That I've got victory over every sickness. I've got victory over every disease. I've got victory over my child that needs to be saved. I've got victory over my finances. I've got victory over everything. Somebody give me praise up in here. going to bring it to a halt in a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the likeness of his resurrection. First Corinthians. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let me do this. Uh, let's go with first Corinthians. Uh, hallelujah. 15 and 13. The Bible says, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not written, is not risen. Right? You skip to verse 16. He says, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. It's aimless. It doesn't mean, doesn't have any value. 
Ye are yet in your sins. See what you what it means when we rise from the dead. It means we're no longer in our sins. Is anybody talking to me today? It means that sin does not have dominion over me. It means it doesn't control me. It means that transgressions have been blotted out when I rise in him. I understand that death has no power over me any longer. That sin does not control me, that my nasty habits don't control me, but I am moved by the power of the Most High God. Somebody ought to shout Jesus! Oh, glory to God. He goes on to say here, glory to God, he said, listen, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If, if in this life only, we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. I'm most miserable if all I believe that this is what it is. But it's got to be more than this. It's got to be more than this pain. It's got to be more than a nice house, a nice job, a beautiful wife, lovely children, and a good old car. There's got to be more than that. I've got to believe that one day I'm going to walk on the streets of gold. There's got be more than this. That one day there'll be no weeping, no more crying, no more tears. The lion and the lamb are going to feed together. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. But now, hallelujah, it says, is Christ risen from the dead? and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Verse 25, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet, like Genesis 3.15 said he would do. Can somebody give him praise? The Bible says the last enemy that shall shall be destroyed is death. Uh, and when you jump to 441, uh, it says there is one glory of the sun uh, and another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. Uh, from one star different from another and star and glory. Uh, so also in the resurrection of the dead. Uh, it is sown in corruption. Uh, it is raised in incorruption. Uh, it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Uh, it is sown in weakness. Uh, let the weak say that I'm strong. Uh, let the down say that I'm up. Uh, let the chaotic say I got joy. Uh, let those in turmoil say I got peace. Uh, somebody shout the name Jesus. It's sown in weakness. Uh, but it's raised in power. It's sown a natural body. It's raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body, there's a spiritual body. And as it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not first uh, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. Here we go. Uh, uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 51, uh, Behold, I show you a mystery. Uh, we shall not all sleep, uh, but we shall all be changed uh, in a moment, uh, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, at the last trump, uh, for the trumpet shall sound. Uh, I wish I had brought my horn with me uh, so I could sound an alarm. Uh, come on, somebody give a praise. Uh, that's why he said, lift up your voice like a trumpet in time uh, and show the house of transgression uh, my people are singing uh, uh, the house of Jacob, the transgression uh, come on, somebody uh, he said, listen, uh, for this corruptible must put on incorruption uh, and this mortality must put on uh, immortality uh, so when this corruptible uh, hallelujah shall have put on uh, incorruption is mortality put on immortality uh, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written uh, somebody say it with me uh, death is swallowed up in victory uh, oh death where is thy sting uh, oh grave where is thy victory uh, the sting of death is sin uh, and the strength of sin is the law uh, but thanks be to God uh, which giveth us the victory uh, uh, through the hallelujah through our Lord Jesus 
Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. What do you mean? The reason I can be steadfast, the reason I can be unmovable, the reason I can always abound, because I know that one day I'm going to rise again in the road.
resurrection, God. We thank you for showing us how wonderful, how mighty, how magnificent that power is, God. Power to raise the dead. Power to heal the sick, God. Power to come out of a tough situation. It's that power, God, to be trapped in a lion's den and not be eaten up, God. It's that power, Lord God, to go into a fiery furnace and not be burned up and consumed, Lord God. That's the kind of power, God. It's that power that a man is thrown into a grave with a dead prophet's bone and then yet he lives again. That's the type of power, hallelujah, Jesus, that you possess, Lord. God, I, I want you to pray with me. Lord, I'm asking you right now to forgive me, Lord God. Forgive us, we pray together, Lord God, for having such a lack of faith, God, for fearing God, for being in doubt, Lord God. Hey, Lord, for not realizing, for not taking you, God, at your word, knowing, God, that you are a magnificent God. That you're a wonderful God. We love you in this place. We glorify you, God. We give you today, Jesus, all glory. We give you, Father, all honor and praise. I thank you for the power that dwells in you, God. Help us to be the husbands that you desire for us to be, the, the, the wives, God, the men and women and the children that you want us to be, God. Help us to show on our jobs and wherever we are and our family members, God. Help us to show, God, that resurrected life, Lord God. Oh, I thank you for the Holy Ghost, God. I thank you, Father, for that resurrected power, Lord. I'm asking you to touch each and every one of my family members, Lord God. Help those that are not in you to get in you, Lord God. And help those that are in you that have given their lives to you to continue to strive for you, God. We're praying for our neighbors, Lord God, our family members, God, those that are struggling in the midst of this COVID-19 situation, Lord. I thank God that we will be resurrected even out of this, God. We glorify you, O King. We magnify you, Lord God in heaven. For you are worthy of all praise, God. Worthy of glory and honor, Lord King Jesus. Hallelujah. Resurrection. You are the resurrection, God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, would you give him praise in this house?
God did it for me, you, for each and every one of us. We thank God for the resurrection and the life. And we know the resurrection and the life by what other name? The name Jesus. Come on, somebody give him praise. Jesus' name, God bless you.